So I'm guilty of sloppy thinking of the thing that I want the most. I feel like I've learned how to find alignment, but here's a softer way of saying that here's a kinder and gentler way of saying that to yourself. Law of attraction has its way with me. And if I don't catch my satisfaction or dissatisfaction at early stages, then I often get called away from who I really am. And then it's hard for me to pull myself back. So then I accuse myself of being a sloppy thinker when all I really am is someone that's under the influence of law of attraction. I just didn't catch it soon enough. That's all. Doesn't that feel better? And tonight I'm going to sleep and the momentum of that's going to subside or today I'm going to meditate and I'm going to allow my vibration to rise. So it gets easier and easier for me. So I'm a sloppy thinker, or I could say law of attraction has its way with me. And I could say that's good that law of attraction has its way with me. And it's also good for me to acknowledge that I'm not the one exception in all of the universe that can think a negative thought or can think in opposition to what I want and feel good about it. Ooh, it's good that I know I'm a sloppy thinker. If I weren't aware of negative emotion, I wouldn't even know I'm a sloppy thinker. I would think I'm a perfectly fine thinker to think these thoughts of hate. I wouldn't call it sloppy thinking. I'd call it the American way. <laughs> I'd call it proper parenting. I'd call it staying the course. I'd call it gaining and painting. And so what you want most is focus. Well, let's chew the corners off of that a little bit too. What I want is to be aware of, of how my thoughts fit with the greater scheme of who I am so that I can think in more moments with more clarity, with more profound wisdom, with more understanding of who I really am. Yes. And I'm getting better and better at it. You are. You are. Everyone does some sloppy thinking every now and again. In other words, when something's really loud going on, it's hard not to notice it. It's hard to think about a healthy foot when your toe is throbbing. It's not an easy thing. So you might say, I'm a sloppy thinker. Well, what you might say instead is some thoughts were getting away from me and I wasn't maintaining my balance and I've got enough momentum going that now it's really hard. Now's not the time to try to shore up my thought because law of attraction has got me too far out of whack for me to start trying to contour my thought right now. Maybe I'll just put some salve on my throbbing toe for a minute and focus upon some other things for a while and try to not take so many steps forward when I'm feeling sort of bound up and let myself sort of chill and come into alignment with who I really am. And then I'll go again. It's all good. Want to talk about something specific? Imposing will on others. I'm in a relationship that's caused me to expand. I'm very grateful for that. Someone and imposing it's... will on you or you imposing no, will I've... on the other? I'm trying to get them to wake up. I'm trying to get it, get her to wake up out of fear. And I don't know that it, that's my place. Well, do you want to kick her out of the nest or call her over to the post over there? The difference. Well, I've been trying to call where I'm saying, so give I, us a little bit of it if you want to, and we'll chew with you about it. Someone that's been hurt and is fearful of love and connection and bonding but a kind person. I can't reach that level of love with this person because they're fearful. They're afraid they've been hurt and don't want to be hurt again. But the thing that we really want to ask you is as you are acknowledging that, and we are not doubting that your perspective that you're verbalizing here is an accurate one, but as you are verbalizing it, are you under the influence of your inner being or are you under the influence of what you've been observing? I, I do both. And that's why I said my sloppy thinking, but in this conversation, you're looking for mutuality with this person. And so you're wanting to be heard, but you're wanting to say something different than her life experience has taught her. You don't have very much clarity 
and not much influence toward what you really want to have influence toward because your attention is upon the part of her experience that you don't want while you're speaking. So you've got to find another way of looking at this. Here's a very powerful thing to acknowledge. You either have to be able to focus upon something else at the same time you're talking to a person that keeps you in alignment with who you are or you've got to find something about that person while you're talking to them that keeps you in alignment with who you are it's why it's so difficult for doctors and some healers to actually have any real influence for wellness because the illness is so obvious to them and so they're zooming in to help an illness which means they're zooming in to help the illness rather than maintaining their knowledge of wellness and pulling the person up toward wellness makes sense so you do most of your good work when you're trying to help another when you're not with them because when you're with them they get your attention and Sometimes you try so hard to help them that you go to where they are to try to help them. But there's another end of that stick. So just give us two predominant things that you witness that make you want to help. Something that comes up fairly frequently. Just the inability to acknowledge the relationship. Stubbornly holding to isolation. Yeah. What is it that bothers you? What hits you the hardest? What is it that makes you come to the conclusion that you've come to? Because you know, the conclusion that you've come to is a belief that doesn't match your desire. So we're not even talking about the other person. We're talking about you using this other person as a focal point, but you've got a belief about that other person, but it doesn't matter. You've got a belief that doesn't match your desire. And you're blaming it on the behavior of the other person. <laughs> well, it's about the other person. Doesn't matter what it's about. You've got a belief that doesn't match your desire. So what are you going to do about it? How are you going to chew the edges off of that? It's a good question. What are you going to do about it? What feels like the path of least resistance? What aspects of that belief feel satisfying and what aspects of that belief feel unsatisfying? Well, the aspects of the belief that feels unsatisfying is that it is what it is and I can't get her to budge or I need her to change in order for me to feel better. Ooh, I need something to be different so that I can have a different response to it. Ooh, I'm living a sort of conditional life. If she were different, everything would be perfect. <laughs> But your work, even in helping other people, especially in helping other people is not to get them to change so that you can feel better. You must find a way to feel better in order to feel better. That's why you said, oh, a lot of expansion has come to me mm -hmm. because of this. You sort of getting this people say, if that were different, then I would feel better. And we say, feel better. And that could be different. And then they say, but what if I feel better and it's not different? We say, you're not feeling better. But what if I do the work and nothing changes? Now you're really off the subject. Well, what if I feel better? Yeah, what if you feel better? Well, why would I feel better if nothing changes? Because everything that you want is so that you can feel better. So why are you binding up how you feel with what somebody else is doing? That's out of whack. Esther says, that's jacked up. That's jacked up. What's wrong with that picture? I need to control how you feel so that I can feel better. Well, that can get way out of hand fast, can't it? If how I feel is dependent upon what anybody else is doing, then I'm going to be really busy and they're not going to do all that much changing for me. In fact, have you ever had anybody zoom in with an intention of changing you? Don't you just kind of dig in most of the time you do because when someone says I'm here to help, what they're really saying is, I notice there's things about you that aren't the way that they should be. And I'd like to help you be more like I like you to be. <laughs> what it comes down to is finally you have to decide, I want to feel good. I want to feel good so much that I'm not going to look in the places or at the people where I don't feel good. I'm going to give myself that break. I'm going to let them all do whatever it is they're doing while I catch alignment with who I am. And once I catch alignment with who I am, then my influence is greater. And then I can call them upward toward who they really are. Maybe, or maybe not, but my job is not to 
swoop down and grab them and take them up that's not the way that it works my work is to stay there and be a living breathing example of someone who feels good anyway because that's what they want you see unconditionally right because when I've had those moments um, and I guess that's what I'm looking for is the steadiness I've had those moments with different responses when I do worry about me and in my alignment I that's Things really do. why we're starting with this conversation about satisfaction because you take a subject like that that has a lot of momentum going and it almost feels impossible because it sort of kind of is in any moment so when you get on subjects that are easier where you could go dissatisfied or satisfied and you choose satisfied and then you maintain it and you watch yourself gather momentum and power and influence then you begin to trust in the process of the laws of the universe and then you begin to feel more invincible and in your feelings of invincibility then you have step five moments with them in other words a step five moment is where you can see them where they are but your vibration doesn't dip we were explaining this to a person one day about her son and she said but won't he feel like I am forsaking him if I just leave him alone if I don't hover anymore if I don't try to fix things if I don't swoop in if I don't try to cheer him up won't he feel abandoned and we said we're not asking you to take your attention from him we're asking you to get in alignment and then give him your undivided attention we're asking you to give him attention that is of value to him not attention that locks him in where he is big difference that's what a step five moment is it's where you're able to acknowledge contrast and you're even able to acknowledge that someone's where they don't want to be but it doesn't take the breath out of you while you're doing it because you've practiced stability to such an extent when you stood before Jesus dripping your illness he saw not your illness he only knew your wellness and he knew your wellness in such powerful focused concentrated absoluteness that during the time of his presence with you and your belief in his presence your illness could not even exist in the same vibration because the desire was such that it dominated the vibrational frequency of the moment you see that's what a step five moment is is where you just know and conditions and beliefs that have been there before or even that exist in the moment have no consequence because your signal is so strong you're so tuned in and therefore your influence is great and we said to this woman we said and then your son will know that you're there for him not there for him where neither one of you are of any value to either one of you but there for him where he has a chance of being influenced into something that feels good to him you see really good and also really good time for a segment of refreshment